That's oh, real. Yeah, that's a real. Teeth, I have so many clients. We are the Arms Attorneys. Today we're talking about a high profile self-defense incident actually in Houston at the Houston Zoo in which um, a man had to defend himself against a moving vehicle. We're going to talk through what happens when you're in the situation. When is a car a deadly weapon? What is immediacy when a car is coming towards you? Because I think that's an interesting one. And finally, what do you have to think about if there are other people in the car? But before we get started, show your support for the Second Amendment by hitting the like button. And today's episode is brought to you by the new mugs that just dropped at the Armed Attorney <laughs> Store. We're very proud of these. Um, I plead the fifth and Richard's got... Uh, you'll be hearing from my armed attorneys. You'll be hearing from my armed attorneys. <laughs> so check them out. Um, they also help support the channel. And Richard, what do we have going on today? So what brought these kind of questions to mind was this was a high profile case that's happened this past Friday. We had, um, and this is all you know, publicly available information. We have a woman involved in an alleged assault fighting over a parking spot at the Houston Zoo. The parking there is a nightmare, by the way. No, it is. It makes you, you it does send you right to Rage Town when you're <laughs> trying to park at the Houston Zoo. So I get it. So she has this alter, alleged altercation. She starts fleeing, is blocked by security because, um, you know, I'm potentially involved stop in a crime. But She hit someone, stop her. Yeah, but this is where instead of making the decision to bring her car to a stop, and maybe exchange information or, you know, deal with the consequences of your actions right then and there. Uh, she hits the accelerator and charges towards a security officer uh, at a high rate of speed. In response, security officer discharges his firearm to preserve his own life, uh, hits the driver, and uh, she crashes out. You know, then we have big, you know, big scene, lots of police involvement. And so it raises kind of those three big issues. And we talk to folks, you know, there's a lot of defensive incidents surrounding vehicles uh, there's some different factors that we all need to be aware of what makes a good self-defense case what makes a bad self-defense case and so i think that's kind of where we need to start i will say before we even get there uh, this is not the first um armed attorneys deal with houston zoos oh that's of, hilarious right so i know what you're talking about yeah okay so just just to to lay some background here edwin walker is in an a never ending feud with the Houston Zoo mm -hmm. because um, we passed a law here in Texas that says that, um, you know, you cannot ban people on government property unless it's a very specific named place from carrying their firearms. That law passed. We got a cause of action that the attorney general can enforce. And Edwin Walker was like, you know who does this? The zoo, which for a man with no children, he was very concerned to get the zoo. Real upset about the zoo. In check. That he was like, I'm going to get that zoo. And so he sends this very formal letter to the zoo and says, take down your sign, zoo. You're not allowed to do this anymore. Um, and the city of Houston lawyer actually calls him, right, and is very conciliatory. They take the signs down. Um, and then, what, like, chaos ensues? Yeah. Basically? Yeah. He. Uh, we got to find the news article. I'll, I'll put it up there because it did stir quite a bit of controversy. Yeah. I remember the... PETA activist death threats coming into the office, actually. I mean, people were calling and they were like, I'm going to bring a gun to your office. I'm going to shoot him because, and it was like, whoa, dog. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm going to butcher the quote a little bit, but I'm paraphrased. It's going to be very clo close, but I think Edwin Walker is quoted as saying, I personally guarantee a license holder will not shoot a baby giraffe in the face in front of a bunch of school children. That was pretty darn close. Yeah. So we'll- and to his credit, it has not happened. Yep, there we um, are. Now the zoo also decided to ban guns once again. This, sure. is, of course, has nothing to do with any armed security in the parking lot. It's just citizens going in. And we have been waiting on the attorney general to resolve that and perhaps file suit against the Houston Zoo for tick, tick, tick. Come on, Kim Paxton. Eight years now? Yeah, it's eight, been Eight, nine years, maybe? It's been a little while. It's but, been a bit. All right, let's get to that first question that we had, though, uh, first of... Uh, what is a deadly weapon? Okay, a deadly weapon. And this is, I'm going to talk to you about what Texas says, but it is virtually identical in every state. But Texas says that a deadly weapon is something that is capable of causing serious bodily injury or death, or in its manner of use, causes serious bodily injury or death. That is consistent pretty much throughout the state. I mean, slight variations in wording, but that's really about it. So um, anything. Anything is a deadly weapon. We have specifically named deadly weapons, right? Like firearms. Yeah. yeah. And then you, we have actually a, a hilarious line of Texas cases mm -hmm. that go through and point out funny things, you know, pillows, statues of baby Jesus, you know. That's all, real. Yeah, that's a real. Teeth. I have so many clients. 
teeth. I yep. got biter clients. They've used teeth. Teeth have been alleged to be deadly weapons. So, so so manifestly designed, made, or adapted to inflict serious bodily injury or death or in the manner of its use. So we fall into these two categories, and that's where we get to vehicles. Vehicles not designed, made, or adapted to inflict serious bodily injury or death. But sometimes when people use them in a way... In their manner of use. Yeah, that's when they become deadly weapons. So, so we all, know, right, if a car hits you, I mean, even at low speeds, if a car hits you, it's going to break your ribs. I mean, it's going to... You are going to get hurt even at low speeds. Yes. I mean, and especially when someone is being intentional, um, you know, intentionally, knowingly, or recklessly trying to hit somebody with their vehicle, that's going to be a deadly weapon. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, my ex-husband got hit by a car that one time. Do you remember that? No. You don't? No. Remember he got his foot run over at oh, the soccer stadium? Okay, yes, I do know. And that was at like two miles an hour. Was that an insurance fraud? No. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I thought he was one of those. Mm -mm. But at two miles an hour, sure. it was still a serious bodily injury. That foot was, ugh. All right, what's our next question? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to what does immediacy mean when you're looking at a vehicle? Um, do we have hard and fast rules about how close it needs to be to you, how fast it's going? So I want to hear your take on that before I weigh in. I'm not aware of any state that has a law in the books that says a car traveling at this speed equals deadly weapon. Um, you, we just don't see that. So it's going to be a totality of the circumstances. We're going to look at speed, distance, ability to escape, ability to call for help, ability for the vehicle to reach you. You know, if you're standing at the top of a flight of stairs, guess what? The car's probably not going to get to you. So it's going to look at all of those different factors and figuring out, is there time to summon help or is there a reasonable, safe alternative to engaging with the vehicle? In a lot of these instances, uh, there isn't. Right. And, you know, bear in mind, too, even if you have no duty to retreat, like we've used this clip recently, like the steamroller coming real slow, right? Oh, yeah. Even if you have no duty to retreat, if something's coming at you really slow and you have an option that's get out of the way, in the absence of a legal duty, we still recommend it, right? Because yeah. police, they don't like you seeking out a confrontation. Juries, more importantly, don't like it. If you have to shoot someone in the face because they're driving a car at you, like in this instance, we want you to be the absolute good actor in all respects. And that includes trying to either de-escalate or avoid the scenario entirely. Yeah, but with cars, a lot of time, the threat is coming to you. There's mm -hmm. no time to summon There's no help. Time. There's no time to uh, jump out of the way. No. Um, and that's kind of, I think, the scenario that we found ourselves here now. Wrinkle, what throws kind of a wrench in all this and, and gets to our third question of, what happens if there's, you know, innocent third parties? They could be yeah. behind, around the car. They could be in the car. Uh, does that change our calculation for, okay, so I think, let me back myself up a little bit. Use of deadly force under these circumstances, 100% justified. Yes, 1,000% justified. A car is coming at you and the car is going to hit you and you have to defend yourself because it is immediately necessary. You get to shoot. Yeah. You get to shoot. That is justified in the state of Texas seven days a week and twice on Sunday. Yeah, and so we look at now, going back to that third question, innocent bystanders, potentially in the vehicle itself, does that change the calculation? Well, potentially. So it depends on whether or not you were reckless in your use of deadly force. So um, you get to defend yourself. You get to be immune if you are not reckless from both, you know, being charged with those innocent bystanders, um, you know, injury or potentially death, and with their medical bills, so being sued civilly for their injuries or for their death. Well, you could still be sued, but you're not going to pay. However, that all goes out the window if you were reckless. Yeah, and so recklessness is a is when you know about a substantial and unjustifiable risk and you consciously disregard that risk. So knowing that maybe there's a, you got a busload of people or knowing that the car is completely surrounded by innocence um, and you say, you know what? screw that, I'm still going to go for this this self-defense here, I'm still going to shoot. If you were to injure one of those people, that would be unjustifiable. Well, it is. I mean, you're going to get charged for it, and you're yeah. going to have to go to a jury. I mean, Leslie just had this case recently, and I wanted to try it with her, but I was very, very pregnant, and the judge wouldn't give me a continuance for being nine months pregnant. That's a crime. Female judiciary in Houston. Anyway, um, so but remember, she went and tried it without me, and it was... He had to shoot into basically the crowd at the at the barbecue because oh, yeah. the guy had a gun at him and he ended up hitting someone who was innocent. Um, and the state acquitted. I mean, the state, the jury acquitted him. Yep. But he was charged and he it was a it was a recklessness issue. Right. So you still get to save your own life. 
but bear in mind, if you do hit one of those innocents, um, if it is deemed reckless, then you may have an issue. Now, um, you know, let's say you have no idea and not a no reasonable person would know there were innocents around. Yeah, or you didn't have the opportunity. You know, let's say the car speeding so yep. fast, you don't have an opportunity to observe it. Mm -mm, right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think there's any hint of recklessness there if you were to hurt an innocent bystander. Right. And again, I'm not saying this is a fair state of the world that you could be charged, um, but just understand. And that recklessness is standard in Texas, right? But yeah. um, it is very similar in many other places around the country. But I mean, we're going to keep an eye on this um, because it is very, very interesting. And unfortunately, um, it is something that comes up a lot. I mean, I've had quite a few people who have shot at cars. Right? Yeah, no, I've so. had quite a few people who have shot at cars. Justifiably. Justifiably. But we hope you enjoyed this discussion. If you did, consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and help us fight the anti-2A algorithm by sharing this video. And question, comment for us below. Let us know what you think about this incident and check out our store for our brand new mugs. And until next time, we're the Arms Turkeys. He has a good cry. He hugs it out. <laughs> <laughs>